In experiments using CAT scanning imagery, neurologists have found that the human mind remains conscious for approximately four minutes after death. This is cited in Neuroscience Review, Volume 23, pages 23 through 46. Eleven o three a.m. I first became aware of him while I was dozing late on a foggy Sunday morning. Something or someone brushed against my arm and I awoke with my heart pounding. I live alone, so if someone is stirring over there by the closet, I've got an intruder. I pulled the sheet away from my face so as to spy unnoticed, ready to hit 911 on my speed dial. As I pulled the pillow back, there he lay, reflected in the mirror that hung on the inside of my open closet door. From my vantage point, it appeared that it was I who was examining the rows of shirts and ties that ran down the narrow room. The only problem was that I was still in bed, with the covers pulled up over my head. I lay squinting out from under a fold in the pillow, so I know that he can't possibly know that I'm watching him. He reappeared as soon as I stepped in front of the mirror. He was yawning and squinting, just like me. Was he right behind me? Or in front of me? Reaching to touch my face and reassure myself of my own solidity, I checked the stubble on my chin. He did too, but imperceptibly more slowly. Almost as if he needed a millisecond for his reflexes to respond. Then shakily poured myself a cup of the black stuff and waited for it to cool. I stared into the steaming cup. Odd. Where's my reflection? It must be too dark. Then my face materialized as the ripples in the surface calmed. I was starting to feel better already. The house felt like it was closing in on me, so I went out for a walk, the cool breeze from the river washing over me. I followed the growing chill down the hillside and through the empty streets. I was still riding that wave of lightheadedness as I floated away from my house. I was trying to wake up from my groggy state as I found myself wandering aimlessly towards the edge of the town. In the drifting fog, people and objects appeared out of nowhere, then just as quickly disappeared without a trace. A carousel. A carnival. And then, a flea market materialized out of thin air. I wandered down the narrow aisles littered with the detritus of other people's lives. Broken boxes spilling books blocked my path. I reached into the pile and drew out the doppelganger, harbinger of death. It was a thin tome translated from the German. It gave me a shiver of fear and recognition. I had once owned this very copy. I bought it without thinking and walked back home in the lifting fog. The ocean mists melted into thin air and a bright white light shone down through the tunnel of clear sky. I followed the light back towards my home, but I still didn't have a shadow. It was around noon, so perhaps my shadow is directly underfoot. The cypress trees in the park cast a cool shade when I walked through them. How could that be? When I turned into my street, I was reassured to see my shadow in its place, obedient as always to my every movement. But then it bolted and walked purposefully back towards the trees. My shadow melted into their darkness. I ran over to rejoin it, but it squirted out from beneath my feet and vanished into the long purple shadow cast by my house. I could see it flowing down the stairs and into the basement. I ran to catch it but it slipped from my grasp. I 
I went inside and locked the door, peering through the curtains in fear of my now disembodied shadow. Outside, the momentary sunlight had faded into fog once again. I left the lights off so that I couldn't be seen from the street. Here, inside, I could feel a cold wind again, and then what felt like cold hands pressing against my neck. I was shivering. As I turned, I could see my shadow cast long on the floor, standing at the basement door. But it was reversed somehow, and its head met my feet, its hand reaching out towards me. The shadow then pulled itself up, slithering off the floor, wrapping me in its snake-like embrace. In the mirror, I could make out the black form struggling with my human shape, move for move, hold for hold, like wrestlers in the distance. After what seemed like an eternity, it grew darker in the mirror's reflection. The writhing shadow had grown stronger and asserted its strength, and it stood looming over the human form that lay on the floor. Their places reversed. Just as shadows slowly steal the day, the dark shape eclipsed the light. Its pooling darkness then flowed away into the corners of the mirror, carrying both figures away, leaving only an empty, cracked, silver window dangling on the door. I continued to stare deep into the mirror, searching for the shadow, the human form, my face. But all I could see was the wall behind me and the clock that hung where I should have been in the reflection. I reached out and touched the mirror. The surface gave way like water, and I slipped headlong into its pool of silver shimmering light, following the shadow away. 1107.